Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be reviewing the CR Scan Ferret. So this is the actual device itself. So it's only a small device, really light, 105 grams. And it comes with a rechargeable handle that acts as a tripod or basically like a selfie stick with a gimbal on the front so you can do your scanning. And well, at the moment this is connected up by USB cable to my laptop. There is, well inside here, this is the case, inside here there's a nice little connector. And I'm actually doing this up, instead of undoing it, there we go. And it allows your phone to be attached to it in the middle here. So you can have your phone attached and run this off your phone. So you can have a, like an all-in-one solution for your phone and the 3D scanner so you can see what you're doing with the software upon there. So it's Android based and also Windows. It's low power consumption, comes with a rechargeable handle and the necessary cable supply to power it from either a laptop, a phone or even a five volt power pack. But we can power it from here. When this is connected up to a laptop, it's actually powered via the USB. So the data and the power goes via the USB. So the Creality Scan Ferret is built with something called an ASIC deep computing chip. Now again, past that piece of marketing, well, an ASIC is basically a posh name for a custom chip. It's an application specific integrated circuit and it allows the ferret to do all the hard work rather than the computer. So both it can process images in their megapixels taken at 60 frames per second. And it does this 10 times faster than general chips. Because all the processing is done by the chip, that means that your computer is free to run the software. So this part here is the ferret itself. It captures at 30 frames per second to create something called a 3D point cloud. The 3D point cloud represents your model that you're actually scanning. So if you're scanning, say this, it will come up in points in space. So those are literal locations of where that is. It's important to remember that because you won't get an exact representation of the surface or the model that you're creating. There will be some imperfections in there, depending on how well the scanning has gone. So you do need to understand that you will need some 3D experience, as you may need to do some modifications with the model that's created. So the point cloud is created by class one NIR, as in near infrared, and a monocular high resolution dual color camera. And that allows it to actually capture textures for your model in full color. It also has something called advanced structure light technology, allowing it to adapt to the lighting conditions so it allows full color scanning even outdoors in bright sunlight. So it has two scanning modes as well. So two modes it has is high accuracy for small to medium sized targets from as close to 150 millimeters and as small as 50 millimeters giving 0.1 millimeter accuracy and 0.16 millimeter 3D resolution. The wide range mode is for large targets. So it allows a single scan to capture a 560 by 820 millimeter area from as far away as 700 millimeters. And that's, for example, such things as large and medium sized furniture. So it's recommended that you use an operating system of Windows 10 or 11 if you're using it with a laptop or Android 10, 11 or 12 if you're using it with a phone. You must have also at least a gigabyte of memory. The data is transmitted by USB-C, which all comes with the package. So inside this zip here, you'll find the cables that are needed, also the cable on the scan ferry here. So we're gonna have a look at using this now. Now I've got a couple of things that I'm going to scan. So I've got this Groot plant holder here, and also I've got this little elephant. So we're gonna use that. And what I'm going to do is basically take a bent paper clip and a bit of yarn or fishing line and attach it to its trunk, hang it up by its trunk onto a lampshade and then we can scan around that and see how we get on. Now I've been given, and I'm talking into it now, a microphone stand. So if I come over here and we can see this is what I'm talking into. If we look behind there, you can see this stand is connected here. Now this stops vibrations, but when I was sent this, and this was sent via someone from my YouTube channel that found my address and sent me this through the post, which was very nice of them. I'm no a bit 
frightening as well that they found out where I, well, it's not where I live, it's where I work, but they still found out that and they sent me through this nice stand, but my microphone doesn't fit and I want to solve this. And to solve it, I need to create a, whatever this is, the connector that goes around the microphone. I'm probably messing up my sound here. And some bungees attach this to stop vibration. So that's what we're going to do with that. So I'm going to scan the microphone. And let's come back over. So I'm going to scan the actual microphone. There it is there. Because I don't know where my calipers are. And I've been trying to measure this for ages and it's so slippery and so shiny. Well, not so shiny. Um, that I'm having problems. So I'm going to do that. Now, I would try this with my Android phone. But my port is broken. So I can't do that. I actually charge it via wireless charger. I can't do that. I only can do it via the laptop. So let's give this a go and see how it goes. So after connecting the scanner via the USB, the software sees it and we come to this screen. Now this is a very simple screen and it has the options on here for scanning large, medium, small, and if we're scanning normal or face or full human body, and it's pretty simple to use. We have to have the object centered in those red lines that you see in the top left. We also have down the bottom is the infrared view. On the right hand side, you see the object that's being picked up by the scanner. What will happen is if you move off the object or if you go too close to the object or too far away, the gauge on the left will change. As you can see at the moment, that gauge is stationary because I'm standing still with the scanner locked into position. I didn't move my hand. I let the object rotate on the thread and my scanner was able to pick this up. It kept losing tracking, as you can see, it goes red and loses tracking, and I waited for it basically to come around again so it could be picked up again. But you can see little movements on that gauge going in and out result in losing tracking and also other error messages. This is worse if you go around the object trying to scan underneath it or around it, as you can see here, I had to move underneath it and you have to be really careful of the distance you are away and not to lose the object by moving too fast. So you've got to look at the screen to take some practice, taking in all that information. The object is quite small. As you can see, it's the smallest object. But once you're done, we can start processing. And this is down to the speed of your computer. So depending on how fast your computer is, I've got this sped up. And also I've cut the video as well. You end up with the finished object after it's processed the point cloud and convert it into a mesh. Now, when it converts it to a mesh, it's converting it to triangles. So if you're going to import it into a piece of software, those models are going to be big and you may need to do something called decimate the mesh to create a smaller model. We see the object here with the texture and it looks like it's done a pretty good job. The texture's on there. It basically looks like the object. But the problem comes when we look at the object in its untextured form. And we can see where the point cloud has picked up points on that object and done a best guess. So you're not gonna get a full smooth surface. It'll put you in a pretty good ballpark to do some further modifications in your favorite 3D program. You will need some skills and some knowledge in 3D to edit those objects. If we try to print this, then it's going to be a quite a rough print. The next item I scanned was the group plant holder. Now this did a really good job because it's very textured. The Creality Scan Ferret really likes textures. So if you're going out and doing anything with sculpture or capturing textured surfaces, then this is going to come in handy. I took a different approach with this one. I took more of a lazy Susan approach. So I took a piece of paper, placed it on top of that and rotated the paper around. And I think with something like a lazy Susan, this is going to be much easier to use. And you'll see later on when I took another scan of my microphone holder that I took that approach and I had a much better success. 
So the scanning basically was the same. I did miss parts of this scan. What you're looking for is the whole model to go green. But you'll see as I pick the scanner up to get the top, then that's where the problems start occurring. And it can be quite disorientating when you look in the screen, looking at the gauge and also looking at how much of that model has been made green, you can get into a bit of a state. This needs some practice to use. Once you've got some time under your belt, then it should be much more easier to capture these scans. Again, I use the default settings when meshing and the results come out quite good. Looking at this model because it's highly textured, then you can see that we don't really have much problems with the model itself. I did miss a large part of this model around the face, but that was through my own error. The next item I wanted to scan my microphone, well, this was a totally different story. It took me around about 12 attempts, even more, to actually get the model that I wanted. Over and over I tried to scan this and well you can see I was getting some very bizarre results. Even to the point where the model flipped upside down. There was something going on. I tried to cover it in markers. I tried to make the surface less reflective. I did not know what it was. It was only when I looked at the infrared feedback that I noticed I was getting a fuzz from the top of the microphone. The sensor was getting confused with the holes and the reflectivity off the top of the microphone cone. So I decided again to take a Lazy Susan approach and place it upside down in a small plastic cup. Straight away, this proved effective. And I was able to get the model that I wanted. So what's my verdict with the Crowded Scan Ferret? Well, I think if we give it some time and some practice, then I think we're gonna get very good scans out of this. The downside that I have is that it doesn't like completely black objects or shiny objects and it has a tendency to lose tracking of very smooth objects as well so anything textured it deals with really well this does narrow down the applications that can be used for there are sprays that are out there that will make your object less reflective personally i think it's a good product and what i would like to do is follow up with another video where i use it to actually build something to actually build something for my microphone that I scanned in this video. So I hope you enjoyed that review and the details of this product can be found in the description below.